So in my recent quest to be monetized on YouTube, we've done the first step, we've got the 1,000 subscribers, and we've kept getting more watch hours with every new Honey Block video that's been coming out. The Santador video basically doesn't exist. But then the terrible thing happened. I skipped a week of uploading, and now my hours have gone down. I actually don't know if they've gone down, but I think they do. I don't know. I, I kind of don't remember how many hours I have. But anyway, this is another Honey Block video because uh, those do really good. And also, uh, Minecraft and memes combined also seems to do really good. So guess what? That's what we're doing to uh, maximize watch time as much as possible. We got our beautiful living room that I totally didn't steal from Reddit. Well, I kind of not, I don't know. I just saw Reddit post on Google Images and I was like, hey, that looks cool. And then I copied it, changed some things to make it look prettier, added this bookshelf on the back. These armor stands for the table, they looked cool. So yeah, um, pretty cool living room. And this box TV, 10 out of 10 quality right there. So anyways, in my hand we've got this uh, handy dandy controller. It is not a button, it is a controller. Just like this is not a button, this is a mouse. Oh, and also uh, makes these trap doors open and close. This is not a pressure plate, this is a keyboard. This is a laptop, and that is a flower in a pot. Okay, anyway. Uh, so I got the screen, I got this controller, uh, I want to watch some, some, some DVD movies on this, so let me just, uh, rearrange my antenna, even though that is completely unnecessary, because we're not watching TV, we're watching a DVD movie, so if I just, uh, use the controller, and, uh, just turn on the TV, there we go, and, oh, I forgot to put a disc in, but... Uh, I kind of don't have any movies on DVD, so I guess this is what we're watching. Just the DVD logo going back and forth. There are a few issues with the TV, like over here on the bottom. It's kind of not turned on. But I mean, box TVs kind of look like that, right? Like the screen looks a little bit spherical, I guess, right? I don't know. But yeah, look at that uh, DVD logo, you little few visual glitches with the the TV. There seems to be lines going through the logo, and there seems to be little little dots on the screen, but I'm not sure why. But yeah, look at that. It's the edge, and uh, whoa, it bounces back. That is that is that is truly amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that's all it kind of does. It kind of just goes back and forth. This is. Kind of a crappy, crappy TV. I think I'll just, uh, turn it off now. And, uh, there we go. The TV should be turned off, and, uh, it's kind of left, uh, another Sith. Kind of in the same area, actually. Like, this weird, weird visual line on the bottom. I wonder if I try to just, like, slap it. Like, uh, no, uh, nothing, nothing seems to be working. Maybe, oh, that didn't work either. Yeah, nothing Nothing seems to be working. There's just kind of a line there. Uh, whatever. This TV's kind of old anyway, so... Yeah. Oh, look! What's this? A convenient hole in the roof to show the redstone of exactly what's happening? Why, yes, I'm going to go through this hole, and wow, look at all of this redstone. We've got this giant DVD thing. I can throw this controller away now. We've got this giant DVD. we got this station on the end. And yeah, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make one of these DVD things. This won't be a block-by-block -block tutorial, just kind of the things you roughly have to do to build something like this. Or any moving map art, if you actually want to make any moving map art. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut to uh, a world that's a lot bigger because I have no space in this plot and I'm working on another project here. So uh... I'm gonna do that, and I hope you uh, follow along, and uh, don't comment that it doesn't work, because it does, and if it doesn't, then you're stupid, I guess. I don't know. You're not stupid. You just can't follow tutorials. Okay, anyway, let's go into a flat world. So I'm here on the Synergy flat map, and basically the first thing that you want to do is kind of find a big open area where you can make this DVD player, or basically whatever moving pixel art you want to make. And then once you have that, you want to get a map. And wherever you're standing in that area, it will get a map of a 128 by 128 area around you. And as you can see, there are corners on my map because basically what you want to do is you want to go to each corner and you kind of want to map them out like this. So this corner, as you can see, 
I put a block there, and if we go to the opposite corner, that where's the opposite corner? Oh, it's this way. Okay, let me get back in here. Opposite corner is over there. As you, yeah, another stone block. You kind of get it. And the first thing you want to do, if you're in survival, then you kind of want to dig a giant 128 by 128 hole using those corners for reference. But if you're like me and you have world edit commands, then you can just um, slash slash set air that entire thing and just dig it out manually. Instead of digging it out manually, that's what I meant to say. And if you have um, creative commands, just use slash slash fill with air, whatever it is. So there we go. And as you can see, I have already been doing some stuff under here, just kind of showing you how we kind of have to do things. So now that we need to load the map, as you can see, it is completely gray. We have our DVD logo and we have a little station over here with kind of a bunch of blocks kind of sticking out of the map. So the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to build your symbol first. That's kind of the first thing you want to do. So I kind of built my DVD logo one block below this thing because, I don't know, just kind of felt like doing that so I had a little bit more space. So I just built a flat platform and it has to be square and if you don't want to do it square you can just use glass to kind of fill the corners. I don't know if glass pops on the map but if you are using glass I'm pretty sure you might see through and see the flying machine so just be careful what blocks you use. So that is the DVD logo and if you want to do something like this where the DVD kind of matches the background you kind of want to use the same blocks as the background and the reason I use stone is just so I can hide these pistons a little bit better because otherwise the thing would come apart and instead of lines going through you kind of see like pistons um, like gray weird lines separating it so that's why the background is also gray so just to kind of keep it like have some continuity so over here as you can see all of these pistons are facing this side and you kind of want to copy this segment actually. So I'm just going to stand here, pause the video. You can kind of copy these segments and what they look like. So one, two, three, four, five on the very left. And you just want segments of five blocks in an L shape and pistons and observers. These are all sticky pistons. And you want to make sure you alternate between slime and honey all the way throughout your drawing or whatever pixel art you want to move and you can expand it lengthwise if you want to you just need to add more extensions and you can expand it widthwise too you just have to alternate more between honey and slime and then when you are done at the end you kind of want this two-way flying machine arrangement like that so three blocks here and then kind of looks like this so what you want to do is you want to leave the three blocks of your drawing whatever is empty for this two-way flying machine to kind of take that space. So this is what that looks like. All of these pistons you see are sticky pistons. So as you can see, like I said earlier, all of these pistons are facing that wall. So it can no longer move in that direction. So it has to go the other direction. So how we do that is we just have a bunch of blocks that power under these sticky pistons. So you can kind of copy that. It's not really that hard. You can figure out yourself. So you just have repeaters and a giant line of dust. And if we just one tick this that's yeah roughly the center once you that and lots of piston noises are going to get out the piston sound range as you can see the flying machine will kind of gradually take this little wave setup in a really weird pattern and it'll only like update on a map if you are holding a map so that's why i was in f1 mode that entire time those real red dots are the redstone blocks so it's going to go all the way to the end but also uh, for something I forgot to mention, this gap over here, um, so the slime blocks, so this redstone block is my slime block, they were over here, so you want to make sure you punch out these blocks so then the slime doesn't stick to the wall. And same thing for the other side. Um, so it's going to go over here. So this observer, there are blocks um, behind it, but this slime and honey layer over here, no blocks behind it, so make sure you do that. So now our flying machine is on the other side of our 128 by 128 thing. So this is how you activate the extension bit, I guess you could say. So now as you can see, the pistons are facing towards the majority of the hole and not a wall. And this two-way flying machine, because of the 12 block push limit, obviously can't push all of these pistons and blocks and honey at the same time. So we need to separate the segments a little bit. 
So as you can see, under all of these observer bits, we have droppers under them. So all the way over here. And because droppers are solid blocks, you power one dropper, it'll power the dropper next to it. So we just have some repeaters spaced out each other like that. And it kind of continues with enough delay for ticks going across to each row. And then finally over here, we have something slightly different. We have like a redstone line. It goes behind here and it will go behind these observers um, that power these pistons on these droppers and they all have redstone dust and they get powered by this redstone line which will update an observer and an observer on top activating a block activating a piece of redstone that will activate those droppers that will activate the observers lots of activating happening so if i just disconnect this redstone dust just to show you what's happening with the rest of the circuit so I'm going to power this without powering the flying machine, just so you can see what it does. So as you can see, it just snakes its way forward. So now every single segment is separated by one block. So now there is a lot less blocks that needs to be pushed here. So now the flying machine can just gradually push everything. So let me just activate that over here. So there we go. And I'll just replace this redstone and there's a lot of piston noises going on and I did not change my OBS settings back so that was actually a lot louder than it needs to be. So as you can see we have this thing going all the way back again. Now you also may be wondering how did you do the thing where it bounces back and forth? Well that is kind of a little easy-ish thing to do so if, once this thing stops on that end I'll kind of show you how that does it so I guess I'll just speed it up. So there we go, it's completely stopped. So if I just go over here, so something really easy that you can do is just add an observer at the end of whichever one of these block extensions. Make sure it hasn't sit, um, exceeded the push limit. So each of these segments has five slime blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that observer will just be block 11. Then you can just have a block here. So that actually has to be an immovable block or terracotta, so eh, bedrock. I'm kind of too lazy to prick, pick some pretty blocks. So that's just your way of activating it. And then I'll just run a redstone wire all the way over here. I'll just do that so it's easier. So let me get some repeaters. So I'll just run this all the way over here. Uh, that has run out, so boom, 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 and then you want to get something like a piston with an observer on it, something like that. Uh, yeah, that's that's good enough to activate this segment thing. Actually, how am I how am I gonna do this? Good. Let me just take out this, get a piston here, and boom, observer, just like that. So once it reaches that end, it should activate that observer and activate the entire thing. I am not going to test it right now because this video is already long enough. So I know this wasn't a block by block tutorial, but this is just kind of a proof of concept moving pixel art on a thing. So if you want to make your own, you can figure out like with the stuff I gave you. So you can just use that observer activation thing to activate both stations. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, with bigger maps, this will be harder, so try to use the default 128 by 128 map, and yeah. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I This is my 99th video, so that's actually pretty cool. And I kind of want to do something special for my 100th video. I have some things in mind, but that thing will kind of have to be at a later date, so I don't know if you want to wait a bit, or, I don't know, make, uh, just release the video earlier. So... Oh, maybe I'll make a community post on that. So yeah, uh, uh, F5 outro thing. And like always, please get me monetized. Okay, goodbye.